Hello happy people, my name is Andy and I'm the technical evangelist for Status. I'm here to show you how you can easily claim a bounty using Status Open Bounties, which is a tool that we've built to help incentivize open source collaboration both within Ethereum and within the wider open source ecosystem. The basic idea is that anybody who owns a repo on GitHub can create an issue with a feature or a fix in that repo, assign a bounty label to it, and that will automatically deploy a contract onto the Ethereum network that will manage the funds for that bounty so that any open source contributor on the other side can come in, submit a pull request that fixes the issue, and then after going through QA and testing, if the organizational individual merges that pull request into the code base, then the smart contract automatically pays out the contributor. Um, so it's about leveraging the sort of auditable, immutable, censorship resistant, public and transparent transactional features of the Ethereum network in order to help improve our organizational and work processes as open source communities spread across the globe. So if you're a contributor, a bounty hunter, and you're just wanting to learn more about the cryptocurrency ecosystem, you don't have the luxury of giving up your day job, um, and you've been looking for some projects to do on the side where you can still earn some remuneration, but learn lots about uh, how everything actually fits together at a technical level, then Status Open Bounty is for you. Um, and it really is as easy as going to openbounty.status.im. You'll see that we've got a $1 million fund for bounties in the open source ecosystem. Uh, in the four months since launching, we've issued over 300 bounties. Over 160 of them have already been solved. We've contributed over $30,000 into the open source ecosystem. So things are going really, really well. And we're really excited to be able to open this up to more and more organizations and individuals who are wanting to leverage the power of cryptocurrency and decentralizations to, uh, in a sense, set themselves free. Um, all you need to do is log into the site. You'll see that uh, it pops up a GitHub OAuth um, app that re requests access. I've already done that. Um, so uh, here is the app itself. Here's the, you sort of presented with a list of the top hunters and all of the currently active bounties, which is what I'll come back to in a moment. But the first and most important thing to do here to make sure that you can earn cryptocurrency safely for the work that you do is to go to this little drop down in the top right, click on my payment details and update your Ethereum address. You can see I'm using MetaMask, which is a browser extension that keeps your Ethereum addresses uh, for you in a convenient location, but it, this doesn't require MetaMask by any stretch of the imagination. Just make sure that whatever address that you put in here is one that you own and control, not one that's owned on an exchange because they often can't receive tokens. So any address generated with MetaMask or MyEtherWallet or MyCryptoWallet or Parity or Mist or any one of those providers is fine for this. Uh, once you've put it into the address field or have it auto-updated, then just make sure that you click the update button and that you see the screen success box pop up. You can then go and find bounties that are going to be relevant to us. Uh, and there's two means of doing this. Obviously, on the site itself, we've implemented a whole bunch of filters. Um, that will allow you to sort of search for bounties by value, for instance. So you can go in, decide upon what a fair hourly rate would be for someone of your exp experience and expertise, um, how many hours you think it would take to solve different bounties and filter them according to that to find ones that would be beneficial for you. Or you can look at ones that are denominated in different uh, tokens. So ETH, the status network token or the Aragon network token who also use the system. You can look through by dates, so you can find recent ones or slightly older ones that you think you can solve. Uh, or you can look at it by the various owners of bounties, whether it's organizations that you're particularly keen on and follow closely or individuals that you want to work with that have bounties out there. Or you can sort of filter by ones that are unclaimed at the moment. Um, the other way of trying to find issues that... Uh, are easy to start with, especially. So if you're a beginner to all of this and you're just wanting to find an easy way into the cryptocurrency system where you can learn a little bit more and earn crypto at the same time, then uh, come to any one of the status repos, go to the issues tab, um, and you see that you'll see that we've organized uh, our labels such that there's always a good first issue label. 
with uh, a list of sort of 10 to 15 good first issues that are fairly easy for people just wanting to sort of whet their appetites. Uh, and you can see there's one here that's uh, that's a bounty issue, so it would be a good issue for you to go in and perhaps attempt solving. Um, personally, I think that this list PR is based on commit range is quite an interesting uh, bounty. There's quite a lot of SMT behind it, so uh, I think it's worthwhile to go and take a look at uh, this one. You can see it's been issued by Julian, one of our developers, and he wants to make sure that there's an easy way to list PRs related to the new commits in a given release. Uh, so it's just about writing a script. Um, and then if you scroll down here, you'll see this is what the actual bounty looks like. So every time you issue a bounty in one of your repos, this is what will happen. Status open bounty will come in and make a comment. Uh, it shows the address that the contract that manages this bounty is deployed at. And there's a little QR code so that it's really easy for anyone in the world to actually contribute funds to your bounty. The thinking being that then your community can put their money where their mouth is, right? So they can vote with them tokens for specific features or fixes, fixes that they'd specifically like to see. Uh, and then it just has a balance in ETH and a balance in whatever token is associated with it. So I want to fix this bounty. How do I go about doing that? I need to submit a pull request to the status react repo um, that contains the text fixes and then the number of the issue that it fixes. So that in this case, it'd be fixes hashtag 3573. Um, so I want to quickly, I suppose, take you through how to most easily submit a pull request because this is sometimes not obvious for people that haven't used GitHub before. Um, so essentially the way to do this um, is to fork status react using this button up here in the top right hand um, corner, then clone your fork to your local machine so that you can do the changes that you want, push the changes onto your fork, and then submit a pull request from your fork. Um, so, uh, so I've actually already, uh, I've actually already um, forked status react um, because I was having problems with my internet earlier, so I didn't want to wait for all of this stuff to happen. Um, and then what I need to do is go in and clone my fork of it right so uh let's uh see into uh, my cloned repository which is uh, where the stuff will be now um julian issue if we uh go back to this uh says that we need to sort of write a script um that will track all of the prs and the commits associated for each new release um because that will help us with a number of different internal processes. So I'm not actually going to sort of show you. Uh, I'm not actually going to show you how to uh, fix this particular issue because we obviously want uh, a bounty a bounty hunter to fix it. But what I will uh, what I will sort of show you is at least how to navigate around the repo and where the stuff might be. So obviously this is a one. This is a bounty about writing scripts. So we're most interested in the scripts folder here, and that's where we'd go and. Uh, so that's where we'd go and sort of write the script that we're looking for. If we just take a look here, you'll see that we've got a bunch of different scripts for running iOS, running OSX, um, for merging PRs with uh, signing and a bunch of different things that we require for open source repos, for building Android and status go and the rest of these things. So this is where we'd come uh, and write this specific script. Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to do that. Um, what I am going to do just for this specific demo is make a quick edit to the readme so that uh, we can at least um, we can at least see what it might look like to uh, to get started with um, submitting a pull request from our fork. Uh, so let's just add a little bit of emphasis to this particular sentence. Uh, and then what we're going to do is if we uh, get uh, the readme uh, uh, let's just have uh, three five seven three I believe is the issue. Um, If I push this up to my local um, 
clone of status react which should now um let's see here let's take a look uh, i just need to refresh So we can see that my branch is now one commit ahead of status I am develop. So if I want to submit a pull request, um, this is the place to go and do it. Um, so I'm just going to create a new pull request. Um, and the base fork is status I am status react. I want it to be on develop, which is great. It's coming from my develop branch. Specifically, if you can see the change that I've made here. It's just in the readme file, so this is definitely the pull request that I want. Obviously, yours would fix the actual issue. Um, and then we can just take out this. Uh, that title is there because we uh, put that as our commit message. It doesn't matter. You can put fixes uh, in the title or in the description. It really, it's irrelevant. Um, but it is always nice just to. Um, reference the title um, of the issue that you're trying to fix so that we can match it in our repos. Uh, so I'm going to commit range. And then I can create the pull request, uh, making sure that that fixes number 3573 is somewhere in the documentation. So now if we go back to Open Bounty, just log in, we should see that there is one open claim on this list PRs based on a commit range. So that's literally how easy it is to go through the whole process of signing up, updating your payment details, finding a bounty to work on, uh, forking the repo, making your changes, submitting the pull requests, and making sure to reference the issue that you're fixing in your pull request, and everything else is handled for you. Once, if I'd actually fixed that issue and if this pull request got merged, then the funds associated in, with this issue, which is a fair amount of SNT, would automatically be sent to the address that I updated when we did that in these payment details. And that is all she wrote. So I hope you enjoyed this demo of Status Open Bounties. I hope you'll think about joining the open source ecosystem and really pushing forward the more beneficial, collaborative, creative aspects of these amazing networks like Ethereum. Good night.